let's get rolling. Donna, what part of the country are you in? Where is home for you? I'm in Glendale, Arizona, which is a suburb of Phoenix. Okay. And uh, and when you say it's a suburb of Phoenix, are we talking about it's still a very, very full place, but it's three bedroom, four bedroom type homes? Or are we talking about something that's more rural with dirt roads and stuff? No, it's um four bedroom home in a neighborhood. Neighborhoods. Yep. Gotcha. Is, is okay. The area where you live is it is it uh, more rural or is it more? No, it's city. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. And uh, how? What year was it, or how long have you been long arm quilting? Uh, I got my machine in 2010. Okay. Um, and, yeah. and how did you? How, how long you, had you been? Had you been yeah. making quilt tops before then? Just just a little bit before that. I've been, uh, I've sewn since I was seven years old, but I wasn't, I didn't know about quilting. I made a couple baby quilts for gifts on occasion, but I didn't consider myself a quilter. And then um, when I got downsized out of my corporate job and I'm like, okay, what am I going to do with myself? And my aunt invited me to come to, um, Smoky Mountain Quilt Fest in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. And the first year I didn't really fall in love with quilting, but it was more important to me, I was with family. And by the next year I, I was hooked. So then in um, 2010, when I was going there and I was going the gamble booth every day and see learn more about the machine. And then the day before it was time that it was gonna be over, I called my husband and I said, oh, I love this gamble machine. I, I want one. And he goes, well, what do you want me to say? I said, say, buy it. <laughs> so, so that's how it, it happened. I was a um, person that was teaching me every day and showing me things about it. And I said, I really want to buy from my um, local dealer, but I think you should get the commission because you've been talking to me every day. And so they called Gamel and they said, yes, absolutely. And so that's how we did it. That's how I got my red machine. So sure. You got now, your first machine in, in 2010, is that right? Yes. Go ahead, Andrew. Uh, I was going to ask you had tied this to the downsizing from your nine to five job. Yeah. Can you tell me how many months were in between there? Like, you had been growing in your love of quilting. Uh, had you been, you know, looking for other kinds of employment and nothing was really panning out or? Um, no, I hadn't. I, I worked for a, a consulting firm and we were the last, I had traveled with them on different projects over the years, over 10 years. And then um, there wasn't, the project I was on in Phoenix for the Department of Revenue was coming to an end and I didn't want to travel again. So I was just um, kind of in limbo for a little bit. And then I started, once I got my machine and then I started um, getting my business card into quilt shops, um, so joining quilt clubs and uh, handing out my cards. And then it was word of mouth. And I have um, right here, in my what used to be my formal living room is now my studio. So I can work day and night in my pajamas, however I, I need to, and bring people right in my front door, customers and clients. And um, I just, um, I love what I do. So your house I, is I also love the fact that you can get a quilt in like I did recently. And then you get to look at it and decide and look at different um, designs, what's going to work with this, work with the client and see. And uh, I love their faces when they come to pick up their quilt and they're so in love with the end result. It so makes you feel really good, doesn't it? Do yes. you, do you, um, did you start out with a, what, what model of machine did you start out with? I have an Optimum. Is it a hand guided or? 
computer. Oh, one. it's a, a Statler, and I, I have the Ascend now because nice. you know my husband is the type of guy that never says no to me, so I have to be really careful what I ask for. But when I said this Ascend, he said, "Well, you should have the best. If it needs to be upgraded, you sh you should do that." So here I am. Yeah. And did you yeah. did you start out in the beginning with the with the Statler with the computerized? So and originally, yes, it was always it's always been computerized. And I had um, I went to Sugar in um, 2010 with a friend, and while I was there, the very first night I had a stroke. I didn't know that. I thought I had a bad headache. And after a couple of days, I went. I had a taxi take me to the University of Missouri's hospital. And they said, we don't think it's a migraine. We, we believe you had a stroke. We want to um, admit you and run tests. And so after that, and I came back to, uh, my, I told my friend, I said, I didn't get to attend any of the classes. She said, I'll teach you everything you need to know. And so she worked with me and I would go to her house and I'd take really good notes and she'd show me things and I'd come home and I couldn't remember. My my notes didn't make sense. My brain wasn't catching it. And mm. I just cried. And I said to my husband, I should never have bought this machine. I'm not going to be able to learn it. He said, yes, you will. Just take it easy. Take it slow. You'll learn it. And I get goosebumps now. I'm just telling you about it because I have. I stuck with it and I, I have learned it and I love it. Yeah. I, I want to tell a personal story. I, um, we, we have a training program now so that when people get a machine, if they need to watch the video once, they can watch it once. But if they need to watch it 20 times, they can watch it 20 times. But it didn't used to be that way. And I've personally trained hundreds of people. And I've always believed that anyone can learn to use the Statler, but some people will pick it up quick. I mean, it's disgusting how fast they learn it. And then other people are normal. And then some of us are at the back of the train. You know, we're like, I don't know how many times I'm going to have to read this passage or walk through this. But but do you believe like I do that anybody could learn it? Yes. If, they're, if they have their mind made up, they want to, they will. Yep. Yep. Um, I... I wanted to ask you, um, when you were at that show uh, and you kept coming back to the Gamel booth every day, what was it about the Gamel that made you decide to purchase it as opposed to one of those other machines? Well, um, I was staying with my aunt and uncle, and so she took. She said, well, "I'm going to take you to a quilt shop," and the um, owner has handy quilter. So I let him show me all about it for like two hours. And he said, I'll come out to Phoenix, set it up for you, show you everything you need to know. And when I left there with my aunt and uncle, I'm like, okay, now I've, I'm conflicted because I got two ideas. But after sleeping that night and coming up the next morning, and I said, um, I know I now I have a personal relationship with that owner too but I still want the gamble. I just know in my heart, that's the one I'm supposed to have. Okay. Well, that's what yep. I, what I did. So when, when you, um, you got this, you got this machine specifically for the purpose of uh, starting a business. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about the, about that journey of, uh, of growing uh, your business and uh, how how that has uh, how that yes happened. and how you found your customers how you found your customers yeah yeah when I when I uh, started and I had joined a quilt club I volunteered to do a lot of um, charity quilts for free and then as the people saw my the women saw my work and they're like then they started bringing their own personal quilts to me and and it just from there when they saw the, the type of work that I do um, they would bring more and they would tell their friends and that's kind of how this all builds up 
And I've taught my daughter, she's a flight attendant with Southwest, and she'll say, uh, Mom, could I get some time on your machine? Because I've taught her how to run it, too. And she does her quilts on it. And I'm, I was just telling my husband on the weekend, I'd like to teach my granddaughter because when I'm not able to do it or I've gone to be with the Lord, I still want it to stay in our family. So um, not that, I mean, my, my granddaughter is a wedding photographer. I don't think she'd ever want to do it full time, or but she might because uh, she's kind of burned out on wedding photography too. But I, I do, um, I get new people all the time. They, I have my my website as well as um, cards in quilt shops. And I was um, at my one quilt meeting and sat next to another person I didn't know. And uh, I said, so what did you do in your previous life? And she said, I have a PhD in um, by, by medical, medical something, big title. And I'm like, oh my gosh, she said, no, I'm retired and I'm quilting and I'm looking for a long armor. I said, you found one. So she's, uh, she's a new customer. I've done, I've got the second load of her quilts in. So she said how her son and daughter-in-law love the quilts that she did before for them. And uh, so she's doing more quilting. So do you find, do you find at this point, Donna, that uh, are you still growing the customer base or how, what, how's that going? Well, it's just like the one I just told you was a brand new one. And then the new ones, they, they, when they get their quilts back and then they're telling their friends and then I get new ones or I get some that just found my website on um, online and then I've seen it. Somebody will put on uh, online, they're looking for somebody to do t-shirt quilts. I love making t-shirt quilts. So then I say, I do that. And then they, okay, can I get your um, your phone number? So then I start with that and goes on. Because a lot of people hate making t-shirt quilts. And I, it's really? just like, that's a puzzle that I love. So. Yeah. So, so Donna, if you had to estimate um, how much time you spent or how much time you currently spend doing quilting for your customers. Is it like about a 40 hour a week uh, job? I mean, you, you pointed out that it's in the center of your home. So. Well, it's in the front of my home, so it doesn't interfere at all with the rest of my life. But oh, okay. um, I noticed in this past month, my workload has slowed down some. Uh, I think the cost of everything now makes it um, prohibitive for some people, but then I'll get somebody that brings me four or five quilts. So I would say between 30 and 35 hours a week that I'm quilting. And uh -huh. do you do you only do uh, edge to edge or do you do some custom? Oh, no, I do custom. I do whatever they want. I, I do a lot of edge to edge, but then I love doing custom because it makes you think more and plan out the whole quilt. It lets you be a lot more creative, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. So what's your um, per square inch charge for uh, edge to edge? And then um, how do you price out your custom? Do you kind of like quote each one separately or how do you do that? Yes, I um my edge to edge price price is two point nine cents, and then I have like three different prices for custom depending on whether it's um like edge to edge in the in the center or custom in the center and edge to edge in the border, or um, just how intricate it is of of the um, designs. So I have like 4.9, 5.9, 6.9 prices. I don't charge for, for thread. I try to make it very simple. So when my client gets their invoice, they have they don't, there's nothing going to be added on. That's exactly what's owned. And that's the um inch by, you know, width by length and and batting. 
Some bring their own batting, others buy batting from me. But I found that I, I couldn't understand how people can decide how many bobbins it's gonna take and how much to decide, charge for a bobbin. So I don't charge for thread at all. Yeah. And do you know uh, about how many quilts do you do per year? Do you know about how many you do? I, I don't know exactly. Um, or per I would minute. say several hundred. So you stay pretty busy. Yeah. So and also I'm teaching my great grands how to quilt. They had uh, quilts in the local quilt show and got ribbons um, this past March. And um, that's wonderful. And it's wonderful. just fun to see it going down all the generations. Yes, yes, that's wonderful. So, so Donna, what, what was the hardest point in growing your business? I mean, I'm guessing it was towards the beginning. Was there a particular thing that that was really just kind of difficult to get through or to figure out? Um, just lear learning the software, you know, working on uh, charity quilts to learn the software. And then we would go up to a new one, like, you know, from 4.5 to, and you'd go, okay, now we're 7.4.5. Okay, what's different? And, um, it's been really good to, I think I was, I went to um, Quilting with Confidence last fall in um, Avondale, Arizona. And that was really interesting and good. And see some of the things that people are doing that I never thought of. So it was very learning. And, uh... Can you tell us uh, who who has been your biggest uh, cheerleader and support through this journey? Well, my husband for sure. <laughs> He's he th you know he'll come and see a quilt that I'm working on or one I just finished when he comes home from work and he's like, oh, that's really beautiful, and uh, he helps me hang them up and to take pictures of them and he, he'll say, look at how great her points are. <laughs> So he knows he's just learned as as I have um, what looks good and what doesn't. Or if I did, what he always is complimenting me on what I've chosen to. In the beginning, I used to bring my clients in and sit down with them and go through and look at a lot of patterns and let them choose what you know what they would like. And then COVID hit, and I had them drop off quilts in a bin out on my um, side, my front door. And then I would uh, look online and I would, I'd send them an email with a invoice and also an attachment with like six or eight uh, samples to choose from. And if you don't like those, let me know. I'll send some different ones. And um, no, I do. I don't. I let them come in and bring, and I visit a little bit. And then I say, if ask them if they have an idea of what they'd like on it, or if it's flowers or whatever, and then I I send them an invoice and an attachment with um, choices. I know that I I could spend two hours just sitting at the computer with someone. This way, I've had a time time to look at their quilt and get an idea of what I think. And then I pick out patterns and send them to them. And then they email me back what they would like. So I, in case anybody misses that, uh, I want to kind of spend a second on what you just outlined, because I think a lot of times a beginning long arm quilter who's just figuring out how to do this business, she will make that mistake of, sitting down with the lady and looking through catalogs of patterns for ages and ages. And it's kind of frustrating, I think, and it's a big waste of time. And so what you just outlined is a much smarter way of doing it. And I know others do it this way or similar where you take the quilt and you say, all right, I'll have a look at it and I'll see what, 
what ideas come to me for quilting it and I'll send them to you. Is that basically what you kind of are doing? Yes. I asked them in, originally if there was something that they want, if they want what they had in mind. They, yeah. Yes. Because I, one time I sent out an attachment that had something because it looked like the, the, um, quilt was calling for something geometric. So I sent mainly geometric uh, designs and I got an email back from the person said, you know, I was really thinking flowers and usually I don't do flowers on top of flowers or I don't suggest that. But when I found out that's what she wanted, then, the, then I sent those designs to her and she picked out what she yeah. wanted. And it turned out really nice, but yeah, well, that's great, but I would never idea, do flowers on top have, of flowers I, I really either. I don't know what would you think for and then you try to. You know. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> Unless they really yeah, wanted I really that, love right? that. Yes, right, right. Thank you. So well, uh, you, okay, you, you go ahead. No? Uh, all, all right. Well, what you or me, one of us has to go next. But I was really uh, curious about this one. You've already told us about how your husband is your best supporter and he has been throughout the whole process. And I, I think what he said to you over the phone is, is awesome when he said, well, what do you want me to say? You know, well, tell me to buy it. <laughs> that was great. But um, can you tell us uh, what sort of impact this quilting business and the, you know, because it gives you control over your schedule and it gives you some control over your income. How has it changed your life to have this quilting business as opposed to whatever else you would have been doing? It's helped me to um, have a more calm life because I was in a um, computer tech person. And sometimes, you know, if we told the company that it was this project's going to be done in a month or whatever, and it got close to the deadline and there was some things that were found out that we didn't know about before. And then, so you'd have to work till midnight, you know, go in at seven and work till midnight, come home and do the same and work over the weekend. And um, this, you know, I'm in control of my work schedule. And sometimes something goes wrong, right? And you got to um, frog some of the, uh, quilting out because something didn't go right. And so that's time you didn't plan on. And so you might have to work uh, later that, that day or night to get that done. So you can give them the, um, the best product ever. And so those are just times when things happen, you don't, you don't really plan on. So I try to make sure that when I give them a, um, a date that I'm going to have the quilt done, I've planned in if I need an extra day or so. And I'd always ask them, when do you need this by? And and then and many of them say, I, I don't have any deadline. It's for me. I'm keeping it myself. It's not for a wedding or whatever. So that's you know, good information to have so can stay on, on task. Yeah. Do you find that you do your best work in the morning or in the evening? I'm more of a morning person. I I do have my most energy, but I you know if something's not going right and I have to uh, frog out a, a section and I'll, I'll say to my husband, "Can you make dinner tonight? This is what I had planned because I got to get this done." <laughs> and any of those, yeah. yeah. Sounds like you have a real winner of a husband there. I do. I think so too. So Donna, um, so you started out the this business of long arming. You started long arming in uh, 2010, um, and you started this business. Is there anything you can think of that you wish somebody would have told you at the beginning? That you, something that you wish you would have known when you first started. Well, I had a real good mentor. And the person that taught me how to use the machine, and she'd been in in business for about twelve years, 
so she pretty much told me, you know, everything, join a quilt club, um, get your, your business cards in stores, hand them out to people, and they'll, if they really like your work, give them some for their friends, and um, get a, a website, a website where they can go and see pictures of, of quilts that you've done, and um, and then and I I put um, I use Facebook too when I've I quilt for people and and they're okay you know there's yes I, you can show it I know I had a a client that came a few days ago that her and her husband were doing a lot of traveling so she wasn't quilting much and she said I'm always on on Facebook looking at what you've done or what what you taught your great grands you had your quilts up from of that and. Uh, and then especially I like to uh, show off blue ribbon winners, people that have won blue ribbons at our local uh, quilt show. And um, so it's it's really, um, I would say those are the things that I really think are the best ways. So what advice would you have for somebody who is like you 14 years ago and she's trying to decide if this is what she wants to do. It tends to be a pretty difficult decision for people to make because buying a machine is a lot of money. What advice would you have for that person? Well, I, I would tell them you would never be sorry that you went this way. And um, it's a whole different type of sewing. Like I said, I've sewn since I was like seven years old. It's a whole different type of sewing with computer and um, yes, there's, and I think I, I didn't finance mine, but I know a lot of people that you have finance um, available for people to make payments. And there's like so many people quilting now. If they didn't quilt when they were in their um, career days, they start after they retire. And so there's so many, um, you know, there's like several hundred people in my one quilt club. And there's maybe three or four um, long armors in there besides me. And people are just, um, young people are, are joining because you can come at night and work your job during the day or, um, they just want to get started and learn. And I've had people say, could I just come and watch you quilt my quilt? Because I, I want to see how your machine works and everything. And they're just, wow, that's that's so incredible. And like, oh, I tried, when I first did a couple quilts of my own, I had a friend that had a gamel hand guided. And she's about five inches shorter than me. So, so when she said I could, quilt on her machine, I had to be like kind of bent over. By the time the day was over, I had such a backache. I thought, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can do this again. And I sure know I don't want to be doing hand guided, although I do some of that, but not, you know, day after day or quilt after quilt. Yeah, you can do that. And then I saw somebody on Settler. yeah, Facebook that says you don't have to drop your belts. You just do something with the something and you can for your hand you can hand guide without the belt with the belt still on and I'm like I haven't tried that yet but yeah they have power up. oh you that's, should you should try it like yeah we've had power assist ever since you first got your machine 14 years ago but the ascend in particular the um, the teeth on the belts, there's like twice as many teeth, but they're closer together. And something about the different tuning on the Ascend, the power assist is phenomenal. It is, it, it's silky smooth and it's really, really easy for you to get the machine to go where you want without having to drop the belts. Not that 15 seconds to unhook right, the yeah. belts is that big a deal, but you should it try when, it. It's you're... really Nice. If you're trying to do um, hand guided and computer assist on the same quilt, 
it makes a big difference if you have to hook it up again or what you'd have to decide which one am I going to do first where I, right. I think if you do both that's and that's what I, I will try very soon yeah that power yeah. makes yeah. for a much more seamless you can just switch over to hand guided and you don't have to drop those belts switch back to computerized when you're done with that so it's, it's very nice yeah yeah. So, yeah. Um, Donna, I, uh, for, you know, uh, primary, a lot of the people that are watching this are uh, people who are uh, either starting a business uh, of their own in the early stages or thinking about that. Do you think that in this day and age, in the year 2024, do you think it's, do you think it's still something that's possible for someone to do these days? I do. I do really think that, and especially um, if you if you get a, in a club or where there's more quilters and they see your work, because they always have show and tell at the meetings. And if you, somebody sees something that you've done, because the person will say, this um, quilt was quilted by Donna Goldbeck. And then they'll look at me, oh, you know, and so, and then somebody will say, well, I have a couple that I'd like you to do. And so it just... It starts out slow, which you want to because you're learning how to run your machine and how to um, do things of your own first and then for other people. And and you just um, tell them you'll do some quilts for free or, or at least one you know, in the beginning and see if you like my work and then you'll come back. Yeah, even these ladies that you've been doing their quilts for 10 years, if you were to ask them, how many quilts do you have that are in bags where like you've got the top and you've even got the binding all cut and everything, but you've never actually had it finished. And even these ladies that you've been doing their quilts for 10 years, they still have a closet full of unfinished quilt tops. Some probably do. I, I know one person that I told her one time we went on a retreat together and I said, she wouldn't take many money from me for gas. I said, I'd love to quilt a quilt for you. And she says, okay, but she's never bought, brought one. She always, she just piles them up in her closet and she goes on to her next one. And I just, and I thought, well, I asked, I told her several times and she's like, yeah, I, I need to do that, but I haven't. So uh, actually I have. Yeah, well, wait till she said, sees one of them get finished up though. She'll, she'll all of a sudden have to do all of them. Well, I have a, a, a neighbor that lives just four houses from me that I've done over 60 quilts for her. And she um, she's, she says, I, I don't need any more quilts. I don't know who to make one for, but I, I just love making quilts. So <laughs> It's an addiction. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, Donna, thank you so much for sharing your story. And I want to make sure that if people... Uh, want to reach out to you afterwards, maybe they have questions or comments, or they just want to see some of your work. How is it, how are you listed on Facebook if people wanted to see you there? And then what's your email or what's your website address? My website is goldenrulecreations.biz. And my, um, as you can see, I have several names hooked together on Facebook. I'm Donna Larson, Peart and Goldbeck. Okay. So that I makes it my, easy for people to find name, you there. Yeah. My daddy, my baby daddy name and my current husband. All right. There you go. That's All right. Fine. Well, um, did you have anything else, Bobby? No, I just, Donna, I just wanted to thank you so much. It's, it's uh, very inspiring to hear your journey of, uh, I mean, I mean, my gosh, you overcame a stroke and, uh, and just continued on uh, to a successful business. And uh, so it's, it's, it's so inspiring to me to see the different, I mean, you know, just a, a few weeks ago, we had a 20 something year old uh, young lady that was uh, running a business. And now we have somebody that's overcome some of the things that you have overcome. And we just thank you so much for joining us, uh, Donna. It's, it's been very uh, inspiring. And, so I know a a lot about Andrew, but Bobby, I I don't I've never seen your name out. Can you tell me something about your yes, moment with I, Gamel? Uh, yes, I work here at Gamel in the tech support department. 
So, um, yeah, anytime. So you're the Bobby meet, that I always hear um, people say help them so much. Possibly. He's yeah. he's the Bobby. Yes, <laughs> we do. have We do also have another Bobby who's one of our field service technicians. Yes. And so uh, if the if Bobby came to your house, then it was uh, Bobby Testini. But if Bobby helped you over the phone and the Internet, it was Bobby Ware. That's right. So I had the um, when I had the Ascend uh, upgrade, the one gentleman I can't think of his name now, but he's he was at uh, quilting with confidence that I went to, and I said, "Don't I know you?" I said, "Didn't you come to my house?" And he goes, "Yes, I did." So I know I see his pictures when I look on um, the website that he's he's traveling with the uh, quilting with the cause again. Yeah, a lot of people are surprised at how personal we are because if you listen to the internet or to some people talk, they make it sound like Gamel is some big corporation that's trying to take over the world and nothing, well, okay, we're trying to make the world a safe place for quilters. <laughs> we're trying to yeah. make sure that quilters have everything they need, uh, the machines, the education, the service, properly set up machines all that stuff and uh but it is uh i mean it's it's to the point where you know a lot of people know a quarter of the names you know just because yeah. oh well i've i've had jim to my house and i've had you know uh, matt to my house and so yeah you get to know us yeah and we're we're just a, we're a tight-knit family and uh yeah, we're we're not this huge uh, impersonal corporation. We're a family, both the people that work here and the people that have their machines like Donna. We're just we're just all we consider ourselves all part of the family. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah. All righty. Well, um I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the show. I'm just going to give this one reminder that if you enjoyed this episode or maybe it's the first one that you've heard um, you can yes. go on to uh, gamble.com and if you go into any of the shopping pages there's an extra little menu that comes up in the shopping area where people are shopping for a machine and that's a place where you can download a sample business plan you can find out more about the pricing of the machines but one of the options there is to listen to these quilting business success interviews we've got the videos as well as the audio and you can find them on youtube you can find them on a podcast player but uh, however you do we've got over 50 episodes now of different people uh, with their stories and they're all unique but they all share uh, a lot of things in common as well and so thank you everybody for joining us today and we'll see you in two weeks for the next one thank you all right thank you bye-bye okay.